We're working on the true-false in problem three on the practice exam, that's number 15, and let's just go through all of them. Uh, even if p equals np, some algorithmic problems may not be solvable in polynomial time. Uh, that's true. There are some algorithmic problems that we know, for example, are unsolvable, so they're certainly not solvable in polynomial time. There are ones that we know that take more than polynomial time, and it's not subject to p equals np. It is, however, true that all the algorithmic problems in np would, in that case, take polynomial time. When we say a problem of size n can be solved in polynomial time, we mean all algorithms for solving the problem take O of n to the c time in the worst case for some constant c greater than zero. Uh, well, O of n to the c for some constant c greater than zero is a nice definition of polynomial time. Uh, but And we are talking about worst case time, uh, but we do not mean every algorithm for solving the problem takes that much time. It is really, really easy to pick algorithms for problems that we know take polynomial time that take much more than polynomial time. We've seen this from the start of the term, like stable marriage. Can you solve this in more than polynomial time? Sure, try out every matching. That was the first thing we said we could do. And that took n factorial or more time, right? That's clearly much more than polynomial. Um, so this is false. This is not what we mean when we say that. It's really close, but we don't mean all algorithms. We mean that some algorithm for solving the problem takes O of n to the c time in the worst case. All right, if p is not equal to np, then each instance of an np-complete problem takes more than polynomial time to solve. Uh, this is just silly on the face of it. An instance of an np-complete problem takes constant time. A particular instance, you can go off and write an algorithm and solve that problem, and however long your algorithm takes to run, that's the amount of time it took to solve that instance. It's not scalable in the problem size because there's only one problem size, so this is wrong. It is not the case that each instance of the NP-complete problem takes more than polynomial time to solve. Memoizing an algorithm only helps if the algorithm solves the same subproblem multiple times. That is definitely true. If, if it only solves a subproblem once, why bother making a record of the answer to that subproblem? Now, you know, you could argue this and you could say, well, you know, what if I'm memoizing across multiple calls to the algorithm? And, you know, different calls to the algorithm might solve the same subproblem multiple times. Well, okay, uh, you know, I agree with that. This is a true-false problem. You've got to just decide which one is the better answer. And, and I would say that the, the spirit of this statement fits better with this being true, because in that case, you're really talking about the algorithm solving the same subproblem multiple times. Okay, the performance recurrences for binary search and merge sort both illustrate examples of the balanced case of the master theorem. You know... Uh, let's forget about the master theorem for the moment and let's just look at what the recurrences are. So for binary search, it's t of n equals t of n over 2 plus 1 or some constant. Uh, this is binary search. This is binary search. Yes, TBS. Okay. And for merge sort, TMS of n, that's 2t merge sort of n over 2 plus n or c times n or o of n or something like that. Um, and is this the balanced case? Well, over here the log base 2 of 2 is 1 and this is n to the 1, so yeah, that's the balanced case. And the other way of thinking about it is we, we did the tree for merge sort and we saw n work at every level, so it is the balanced case. And this tree would be super easy to draw, right? It's just a node with a 1 next to it, followed by another node with a 1 next to it, until we get down to the base case where there's going to be a 1. And sure enough, at every label, there's at every level, that is, there's going to be one work. So the work is balanced across the whole tree. Furthermore, the log base 2 of 1, don't forget there's, there's an implicit coefficient out here of 1. The log base 2 of 1 is 0, and this over here is indeed n to the 0. So yep, these are both illustrations of the balanced case of the master theorem. Okay, let's keep going. An adversary can provide input that forces worst case performance from a version of quicksort that chooses the median of the first element, the middle element, and the last element as its pivot. Uh, the answer to this is true. Uh, the adversary can just figure out, well, here, let's think of it this way. We know worst case performance exists 
for quicksort, regardless of the fact that it's chosen the pivots in, in this way, because it's, it's not guaranteed to choose a pivot that is, is good, uh, that cuts out a constant fraction of the problem, right? So then we could just try all orderings and see which one produces the worst performance. Um, that's obviously a ridiculous algorithm, but you know, uh, you could totally do it. You could be like, oh, I'm going to put uh, elements one, two, and three in the first, middle, and last places. And then uh, you, you'll, you'll partition it off so that the stuff goes on the right. The stuff that's not one, two, and three goes on the right, and one, two, and three go on the left, or I guess three will go on the right as well. And then three is uh, way over on the right, and you'll put appropriate elements in, you know, I guess you'll put uh, four here, and then like somewhere over here, you'll put five, and so on and so forth. So you could write an algorithm that would construct this worst case performance. Let's jump down here. And there is an efficient algorithm known to find the minimum spanning tree of an undirected graph with integer and possibly negative edge weights. Yep, that would be our minimum spanning tree algorithm. What, what says that it's efficient? Well, we've discussed the fact that it is fairly efficient and we've discussed ways to make it very efficient. But in general, when we just use the word efficient without any additional notation on it, now we know we're talking about polynomial time. So yes, there is. There is an efficient algorithm known to find the longest path between two nodes in a directed graph with positive edge weights. This is a tough question in one sense because, you know, how do you know whether there's an efficient algorithm known? You have to go through and like search all of the literature and all of the references to see if there is an algorithm known. I don't know one off the top of my head. So if I don't know one off the top of my head and I'm using techniques from 320, how do I figure out if there's no known efficient algorithm? Sounds like maybe I want to think about it and see whether it's NP-complete. Uh, and sure enough, you can think about Hamiltonian path, and you can find a nice reduction for this that shows that it is NP-complete. So the answer is no, there is no efficient algorithm known. If there was, we'd know P equals NP.